Ghanaians have an abiding faith in the rule of law, as long as they can pick and choose which aspects of any law must apply to them. We've not learned the lesson that even Moses' tablets have not been able to guarantee the triumph of good over evil, and that it is the wholesome application of law and not its good intent that delivers a just and ordered society. Our consummate belief and wishful thinking that we can fast track personal gain without breaking sweat is the root cause of our enthusiastic preference for working outside the law. More often than not, it is only after laws have been engulfed by chaos and disorder do we realize that we did not pillar them on the social, cultural, and economic realities of the people. Good evening and welcome to Tarzan's Take. This week saw President John Mahama announce yet another ministerial committee to deal with the worsening nuance of Kalamse. Just yesterday, it was reported that three different bodies are claiming the right to redevelop the devastated rings of the Cantamanto market. These are but the latest examples of a country where the tale of the abysmal failure to implement was the dog of the laws that we pass. The questions for us to ponder on tonight are, why are laws disregarded with impunity and total contempt by just about everybody, the makers and the targets? Are our laws being made to serve the public good of the majority or the narrow interest of the lawmakers and implementers? What is it that we always resort to bureaucratic obfuscation to restore order to breaches of our law instead of just applying the many laws already on the books? And lastly, how do we ensure that the laws that we make for ourselves stand a good chance of being obeyed by reflecting the realities of the Ghanaian condition within the global notions of rights, freedoms, and responsibilities. Joining me tonight to discuss these issues are Mr. Nat Nunu Amatefio, a distinguished former mayor of the capital city, Accra, and lawyer Asa Nkuma, one of Ghana's most form foremost legal brains. Join us after the break to sort the wheat from the chaff so that we set the contest for our chat tonight. As you know, I have had occasion to speak publicly about the dangers of illegal small-scale mining over and over again, and the harm it is posing to our nation in terms of our forests being degraded, farmlands being destroyed, water bodies being polluted and poisoned, and the resultant uh, implications for our people. The local small-scale mining industry, also known as Galamse, has been overrun by foreigners whose arrogance and disrespect has reached such dangerous levels that they kill Guineans with impunity. This is in the face of the clear and unambiguous law that Galamse business is reserved for Guineans. Many of our young people, you know, have lost their lives in mining accidents in these illegal uh, so-called Galamse areas. In addition to this, there is now arising friction and conflict in which we're seeing people being murdered, gunned down, you know, as a result of uh, Galamse activities. Some of our citizens have been killed. Foreigners also involved in this illegal activity have also lost their life, their lives. And uh, there are negative consequences of this activity, including lawlessness and criminal uh, behavior. In the wake of the as yet unexplained fires that have engulfed our markets and literally gutted the returns from the tolls and sweat of thousands of fellow citizens, we have become embroiled in turf wars about the legality or otherwise of proposed reconstruction initiatives when it would have been eminently better all round if preemptory actions had been taken to ensure that the occupation and use of the spaces were founded on sound and incontrovertible law. A law is passed 
to regulate the safe operations of motor bicycles on our roads. And on the day of passage, a government minister pronounces that not only should the law be defied, but that he will personally promote and support the act of defiance. Likewise, when laws are passed to protect the rights of children and other vulnerable groups from the cruelties and ravages of some of our cultural beliefs and norms, some of those in whom we have entrusted the leadership of our nation openly declare their opposition to and defiance of the laws. Incredibly, we often reward these saboteurs of enlightenment with higher accolades on the leadership ladder. Laws for the proper management of the movement of people and goods in our cities and towns have been on our statutes books for years, and indeed many of them older than Omangana herself. Yet, those that seek to enforce these laws and bring sanity and order are often derided by those acting illegally and sometimes undermined by both their political allies and foes. A good number of drivers who offend our traffic regulations immediately invoke the name of a big man or worse still, actually call the said big man on phone to instruct the police to let them off. Is it any wonder that the police have become cynical and resorted to blatant subversion of the law through unashamed demand for bribes? Oman Ghana has become a country that loves making laws and pontificating on law and order. We are even better at sidestepping the very laws that we pass and a firm belief and total commitment to. More often than not, just about everyone seeks to exempt themselves from the strictures of the law. They do this in several ways. 1. A blatant disregard of the law in the full knowledge that the law will not be enforced. 2. Veiled and unsettled threats of withdrawal of political support. 3. Protection from the patronage and acquiescent interest of political authority. 4. Resort to the use of illegal enforcers such as land guards and security personnel at large. The situation goes from irritating intolerance to absolute farce when the import and deleterious effects of the disregard of our own laws turn into chaos and unintended consequences that lead to the tragedies from the unacceptable killings of Guineans by foreigners. <laughs> and the human tragedies of the market fires. And what is the response of our rulers in such situations? Instead of doing the right and obvious thing of enforcing the applicable laws, the matter is shrouded in more darkness and obfuscation with the establishment of instant committees, which merely seek to cover up the underlying malfeasance and sleaze which put the spokes into the law in the first place. We've therefore decided to constitute an interministerial task force on illegal mining. In constituting this interministerial task force, I am sending a clear signal to the offending individuals and groupings that government will not allow their activities to cause conflict, dislocation, environmental degradation, and unemployment. It is time we let the order elements that complement the laws of our land to become manifest and effective for the public good of the people of Ghana instead of private greed of those in whose name we have entrusted the mandate of governance. Good evening. Um, law and disorder. Let me start off with you, Ace. Um, is the president right in talking about small-scale mining and illegalities? My sense of the, of the law is that, yes, Ghanaians get the licenses, but does anything stop them from getting others involved? Well, um, I would say that the problem in Ghana is not the lack of law. It is the lack of enforcement. Trust me, you want law on breeding of mosquitoes. We have it in Ghana. You want law on literally on, on how to use the Ghana flag. We have it in Ghana. The problem is with enforcement. Um, By the, this specific case of, of, of the, the minerals and mining. Yes. The, the, the minerals and mining act was passed. And after, in, in 2012, a slew of regulations were passed. Now, this is what happens. You're right. Small scale mining licenses can only be given to Ghanaians. But until last year, there was literally nothing stopping a Ghanaian from saying, I've brought in a Togolese to provide support services. 
which would actually mean in reality the non ghanaian doing the real work. Of course, the, the person would require a work permit, um, working uh, permit, work permit, residence permit, etc., etc. Um, one has to go to immigration. Last year, a specific law was passed to make sure that that could, could not even, even go through immigration without going through the Minerals Commission. So you have to justify that you are a Ghanaian. You can actually hire a non-Ghanaian to work on your, on your, on your concession, etc., etc., and, and for Minerals Commission to agree before the person is given the permit to work here. But that law was just passed last year. I believe that maybe what the president is saying is that we are moving to the enforcement stage where these laws are not just sitting beautifully on our statute books, but he intends to enforce these laws so that all these non ghanaians whom we are seeing illegally providing so-called support services to small-scale um, uh, mines, they, and, and often, yes, the small-scale um, mining license holders are going to be dealt with or st streamlined or deported for working without the proper papers in Ghana. But, but my research is showing that there are people from a particular place in China who have got maybe 20,000 people working here, and they have said they own the mines. They, 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 they don't own the mines. They, 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 they probably paid some money to the small-scale license holder to sit in his house while they do the mine as support services. The reality might be that they probably think they own it, but they don't. Because a transfer can only happen to, from a Ghanaian to a Ghanaian and with the consent of the minister, which is effectively is a minerals commission. And so they probably don't understand our laws. Uh, they, they are speaking a mess. You cannot own a license. They've paid money. They, they, they take the gold. And in fact, I, I, I checked the records, and it's the Ghana Chamber of Mines actually saying that the Chinese are responsible for 40% of our gold production. It, it, it is an unfortunate state of, of, of affairs in Ghana. That's what we're discussing today. Yeah. The law exists, but the disorder exists at the same time in the, in the, with the law. It's, it's an oxymoron. It's a, it's a terrible situation where we, the law exists. The law stops it. But everybody looks on and says, oh, oh wow, 40%. What do we do about the reality? Somebody said to me that, is show me where in Ghana is testimony to 100 years of mining. Show me a mining town that can say that we, that we can point to as testimony of 100 years of mining. But since Galamse started, go to Konongo and see how well the boys are doing. So, some, so the, 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 the argument is that the reality, the real politics, is overshadowing the law. And I like the president's move. We will see how that will come up against the reality of politics and the vote. Mr. Mayor, if Accra had gold, you probably would have kept us all out of Accra. But the mining... No, no, no. <laughs> we will invite everybody. Good. But there's, there's been some mining issues in Accra, sort of winning of sand, etc. I mean, how has the, the, the law, the municipal law, you know, how has that worked in the face of um, the activities of those who, who want to win sand? Well, there are bylaws which uh, specify areas where you can win sand. And technical experts would have a survey of our beach fronts and which areas they would recommend for sand winning. That is the law. But of course, much of the sand winning is done illegally. It's done at night. It's done by young men who are just looking for a way to make a living. Uh, so it does happen. And that, is there any sort of enforcement by the city authorities? Do you go out with patrols at night? To no, city authorities, so far as I'm concerned, so far as I know. And mm. Now, I've got to preface all this. You call mm. me the, the, mayor, former, yeah, the mayor. former mayor, yes. but I left... Ten, AMA. Almost 10 years ago. No, no. I left 14, years, 14 ago. years ago. That's a very long time. A lot of things have changed since then. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So I cannot hold brief for what's happening today. Yeah. During my time, I wasn't aware that we sent out patrols at night. Uh, I don't believe that that is really the responsibility of the city. It's the police that has responsibility. But you, you passed the bylaws. Uh, these are... Uh, bylaws, true, we pass bylaws, but we don't enforce it. Let, let, let me bring you uh, closer home to yesterday in, in, in the graphic, uh, something struck me. It said three different authorities are claiming the right to redevelop the Cantamanto market. And when I was looking at this, 
subject. One of the things that also that struck me is there are about 80 odd markets in Accra. Fewer than a dozen of them have got an imprimatur of the uh, metro or sub-metro authorities. Technically, according to our bylaws, mm. AMA is the only statutory body that can establish and run a market in the city. Okay. But this law was written over 100 years ago. Okay? Uh, our oldest market, Osu market, Osu, is yes. about 140 years old. So th these laws go way back. Uh, Accra has outgrown these laws, and the very definition of a market now comes into question. Is a mall at Tetequasi a market? Of course, a market is a congregation of people, people who are yes. selling things to the public and who are inter asking, inviting people to come there and sell. So it's not much different from Makola, except that it's cleaner, it's better uh, regulated. But these 80 markets I'm talking about are the uh, neighborhood the, the markets. informal markets. Neighborhood markets. And, and, and some, uh, AM is the only body that can set up a Makola, there's a supermarket that can set up another Braca. Now, there are small markets mm. which occur in communities where open spaces and people move on to it and they start selling. And it's convenient because it saves the community. And if this is what they are calling part of the 80, then sure. Cantamanto is not a small market. That was now, Cantamanto, that Cantamanto you're talking about is a special case. One, the or, land, or timber market, for example. The land mm. has been leased. The land is supposed to belong to the railways. Mm. Now, whether they own it or it's just part of their uh, lease estate, I don't know. But that's not unusual because when uh, a space is open in Accra, People squat on it and they start selling things before you realize it is developed into a market, okay? So if these three authorities, bodies are struggling, fighting about this, it could very well be that one, you have the railways that claim that this land is ours. If there is a problem there, it's up to us to set it right. You have the city who says that we are the ones who set up markets. So if a market needs to come here, it's ours to do. Then you have, I mean, this, who is the third authority? The market the, association. The, yeah, that's right. The market that's association right. yes. who are so claiming. And I believe even a, a, a gas tool, all the gas tools. So there will be, this is a, something for the courts to decide. And I think the cost is the right place to decide it. Let me but, ask a, a cynical question. Was, yeah. was the AMA collecting, uh, what do they call it? Tools. Tools at the countermanto market? Yes, AMA the was timber, collecting tools. Knowing that they hadn't set it up? The law, AMA, the way AMA works is, so long as you are transacting business in the city, you owe tolls to the city. Okay. So we collect tolls. Whether you have the right to do it there or not is another story. Okay. But the tolls must be collected because we need the tolls to maintain these places. Ace. Uh, 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 Ace. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, the situation here is very interesting. Yeah. Because if you have one piece of land, many interests can exist in the same piece of land. And that's mm -hmm. probably what we're seeing. Yes. There's the owner of the land who may sure. own what is called the allodium. There may be somebody who owns the use of the land called the use yeah. He may then give a lease to someone who then becomes a, a tenant and pays rent. And someone might have a license, which is the right to enter and leave the land. AMA might have the power to license or to, to give permission for a market to be established. So the market person has a license to be on the land or may have a lease. The market association may have a lease. The railways might have the use of flock. And all these interests are stratified and protected by law. Okay, I'm not sure whether you know the specific law, but I'll ask you anyway. Did the railway have the right to go and sign a, a lease with the market? Well, uh, the, the question is this. Do they own the land? If they do, they have the right to do anything they want to do with it, except if it was compulsorily acquired 
and it is going to be used for a purpose other than which it is set up. I believe it was leased to them the, by the, government for the purposes of running the railway. The, the, well, then, then the question is what, is, what are the terms of the lease agreement, not really the law, the mm. lease agreement between the railways and the government? Is that, that the lease agreement say that this can only be used for railways? Or is maintaining a market close to a railway line a use that is necessary and incidental to the running of a railway? Because, because to go back to one of the issues that Nat raised, that in fact, the third one happens to be uh, the government, which is now saying that it wants... We, uh, government it, meaning AMA or no, no, the national government? No, no, government meaning central government, which okay. is now saying that it wants the land back, to put it back to its original use because of the you, you know what, urban, the, urban transportation. This can be resolved mm -hmm. in five minutes. Yeah. Take a look at the papers. What do the papers say? But we take we 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 enjoy in making the simplest things most complicated because that if, if it's not complicated, people won't get to eat, people won't get to chop. It's as simple as that. So, but just just take a look at the documents. Who get, does the government really have a claim? Did the government acquire the land? Did the government cede the land to the railways? Then guess what? The government itself might not even have a right. It depends on what's written in the papers. This can be resolved in five minutes, I trust me. But trust the Ghana me. Railway is owned 100% by the government. It doesn't matter. And, but it's, and it's, it's saying that... It is a separate and distinct entity. The government acquired... If the government, if the government acquired the land and gave it to railways, the government just cannot walk in one day and say... So is it wrong number. for the Minister of Transport to say that they're going to take over the it land It depends to on the papers that exist between the Ghana, the Ghana government as government, Kwe government, and Ghana Railways you know, Corporation. Charlie, yeah. don't assume that government mm -hmm. owns it. When I went to AMA, mm. the, one of the big problems that I encountered was Makola yeah. had burnt down That's right. a mm. year or two previously. And the then president, Rollins, had promised that the city, AMA, would rebuild the market. So a company had been set up consisting of AMA and SNIT yeah. to rebuild the market. And when I went on board, the construction had started and continuing. Uh, my first board meeting, SNIT asked for shares. In the market. <laughs> okay. My, I understood from uh, my director that AMA's share in the market, in the new market, was the land. It was going to be an equity share. So we were to tend the, uh, the land title over to the company. Reasonable. So I said, OK, next time we come to a meeting, we'll bring the land title. The next time, when, when we left, my director told me, Ms. Mayor, I'm terribly sorry, but we don't have a title to the land. Makola has been written as AMA property for the last 100 years since it was established as a market. It's always been assumed to belong to the city. When time came to renew the lease, really, we didn't have it. Lease. We didn't own it. We had to go and apply to Land Commission to be awarded the lease to the okay. land. Okay. And, and yeah. to make the story even more interesting, it's, I said, wait a minute. If we don't own Makola, which <laughs> is historically yeah. is known as our property, what do we own? It turned out we did not own oh, single. the residence where I live. We did not own the land. <laughs> we did not own the office there you where are we are located. <laughs> there you are. We had to go and do it all again. And do it all over again. Okay? okay. So, yeah. this is a, quite a fascinating question. Who owns what? What land? When the town and country planning shows you their map of the city. They designate certain areas, AMA land, city land. The property where Novotel is located, yes. for years, was designated as AMA, land. AMA property. At the same time, 
Governors Boys School also claimed part of that land because that's where they had their uh, carpentry that's workshop right. and yeah. their gardens. Eh? And these claims coexisted quite happily. As they said, <laughs> there are many different yeah. levels okay. of ownership. Yeah. Uh, Ace. Until, until something happens, until, until, until and this you have to provide the paper Ace, for the law. You are, you know, from your legal perspective, what are, what really are the chances of the traders? Because really, in all of this, one one needs to look at their interests. They've lost a lot of uh, assets. They've lost a lot of personal property. If, if they, it turns out, yeah, that Ghana Railways indeed has title, mm -hmm. and if it turns out that Ghana Railways has given a long lease to the association and given the association the power to parcel out portions as licenses to the traders. The traders might have the most superior right to everyone else. But are they right in saying that they want to build the things themselves? No. Well, uh, but they, 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 you know, well, let's watch it. Look, who owns the land mm -hmm. is the first question. Who has given what rights to be on the land? Now that, as the, the former mayor is saying, the market essentially evolved. Yes, right. Now there's going to be a specific attempt to build a market. At that point in time, they have to go to AMA and get AMA's permission to build the place as a market. So the AMA may, may and, and all of this, like I said, be based on the papers, may not have technical ownership. As he said, they found out that they didn't really own the land Mar Marcola mm. was on, but they had been regulating it for a long time. Oh. So it is important to hit the papers. But what I'm saying is that if the papers indeed show that Ghana Railways owns it, and indeed Ghana Railways gave a long lease, and that lease has been parceled out, then those licenses may exist. But the question is that, are you, are you going to be allowed to set up the market? AMA might say, we won't approve of it, or we will approve of it. So AMA's role might be an approval role. If but it's still like a very important role. Yeah. Uh, oh, critical. A critical, critical role. If they say they won't, they won't, they won't agree, the, 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 the airline that is essentially set up Accra will say, you can't establish a market except with, with their permission. But the reality, as he said, is that a lot of the markets end up evolving so they kind of have an expo, some factual stamp by AMA through the collection of the tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is, a, this is going to be a very interesting case. AMA can actually stop that market from being built. You can build it, but you can't operate a market from there. Well, to the extent that AMA can enforce it. So you think that the, the, the traders have some hope? As I said, may, may, depending on the state of the papers. We all don't know the state of the documents. And that's what we need, we need to be looking at. And I, this thing doesn't have to take a month. Everybody should bring their papers. Appoint an independent umpire. He looks through it says, you own that, you don't own this, you own this, you don't own that. The matter is ended. This can be resolved. Just One of the things I find surprising in all of this is, is what seems to be emerging as a, a fairly hard line of government in this matter, in its attitude to the traders. Because over the years, um, government has actually suspended the application of bylaws for political reasons and uh, that's not entirely correct they have not suspended the application of bylaws they may have touched certain bylaws but to say they suspended bylaws is too catholic a statement well i didn't say every bylaw i well, said it's suspended like I, I said the standard let, let me read what you said when you were mayor Decongesting a cry is a politically toxic thing to do and will remain an arbitrary on the neck of government until politicians master the necessary will to take difficult decisions and decongest the city. The nation's capital will remain a national mess. You face the problem. Your successors have all faced the problem of decongestion mm. from, from both political parties. Mm. Our brother, Ajiri, faced the problem. Uh, the current mayor mm. started an exercise and was stopped by our late president. Mm -hmm. uh, the people in Kumasi uh, said that they did, they did, the party that uh, lost that election because of decongestion. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, it seems to me that there is some relationship between, if you like, the political sensitivity to quote unquote, listen to the people and the inability to decongest. That's why I'm saying that here it seems to be a little out of the way that government seems to be pushing a hard line. And if I may also be cynical, for example, hawkers don't pay tolls. 
and that that may also be why they become targets. But 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 but, but they vote. But they do vote. Okay, let, let me defend the 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 the, 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 the metropolitan authorities. Mm. No, you I'm not attacking them. No, I'm no, just no, saying no, that. I'm, I'm not saying you are. I'm just, all I'm they, saying they, is they, that you know. Let me put the word for them. Yeah. They you you have technocrats experts yeah. put in there to do the work. They look at a crowd. They've drawn the plan for decongest. They they look at Kole and say, wow, we can turn this into a little Amsterdam. We can, we can desilt it, mm. make the water, cure the waters, and put boats on it to ferry people from mm. South Accra to North Accra. I mean, that seems as though frivolous, but yeah. the tr reality no, no, is that... Reality. It's they, a reality. No, we, what we, I mean we, is that... We got money for it. The, the, right? uh, the waterway also flushes out the, the, the city. city. No, I, I'm just I'm giving you an example. So I will prefer that okay. as an example. Said, oh, it's just, it's just than little Amsterdam. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one can take this discussion seriously. Oh, well, we, if we, we are going to throw everybody out <laughs> just to create the, a little, little Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Good. Right. So, but it is part of the sanitation management what, 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 of the what, city. What, what, one of right. the key things is to then deal with what is now known as Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. Old Fadava. Well, the people, the, 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 the usual term, Old Fadava mm -hmm. for, yeah, for, yes. for the planners, for us ordinary people, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, what then happens? And, and this is the time it's gone through various governments. Yes. One government minister looked at it and said, if we send him away, we will lose our constituency yes. in the next election yes. if we attempt to. And some people say, we don't want people in our, near us. So we have a situation where we took money to do this. We took loans, which I presume we are still paying. Mm. And nothing happened. We've, we've been frozen by the politics. You see, the law exists in the statute books in black and white. But it's got to walk off that paper to have effect. Now, that work is, an, is, is hampered by politics, by lack of money, by economic factors, by social factors. If but we don't see, deal with those, the laws will remain very beautiful laws in our statute books, but will not be worth the paper they are written on. So, so, the, so, the, so, so the poor city mayor gets hit all the time. You can't do this. You can't do that. But he's got a boss. And if the boss says... Allow the drivers to park on the street. So why go he, through the exercise? This is Ghana. We bumble and stumble along until we find. For example, we can call you know, light. when my senior brother left office in 2011, long after he left, the AMA passed 77 bylaws to deal with decongestion. In can the I face of all these here? years, mm -hmm. I have an interesting anecdote concerning a bylaw yes, I read a newspaper editorial mm. in the Chronicle criticizing the city authorities for not providing a crowd with proper drainage mm -hmm. and complaining that how can that every time it rains the city floods mm -hmm. if those who have been put in charge cannot do their job then they should get out of the way. <laughs> oh. That editorial was written in 1895 <laughs> <laughs> by the Gold Coast Chronicle. Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and, you see. And, and in 2013. In 2013. Same thing is happening. Yes. No, okay. No, no, I'm not excusing it. No, no, I'm no, just no, telling really, you no. that. You know, actually, what I'm doing is I'm actually defending the city authorities. What I'm saying is that, is there a disconnect between the desire, you know, of the mayor of Accra, who wants to plan and regulate their city, who's built markets, Kaneshi, et cetera, for which people are paying tolls, and others are just walking around making money without paying. And then gets a game plan going, and suddenly the political master just whips the carpet from underneath them. Yes. And it's happening too often. There, there, there is indeed a disconnect. There, there is a disconnect, no doubt about that. Accra is not a city-state. Accra is part of a political organism. Mm -hmm. And these are all connected. Accra mayor has his own agenda regarding the running of the city. And the government has it, an agenda also. A wonderful idea is when the two merge together. But sometimes they don't. But isn't it debilitating that a mayor starts to do what he or she thinks is the right thing? And then somebody comes along and says, wait, sure. wait, 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 we're not running a federal government. No. Yeah. It's a unitary state. I, I so said, so I you said ultimately that. have a boss. But, but you have a point. Now, everybody speaks about Lagos State. Hmm. Federal. But Lagos State then got a governor who was prepared 
to work. And it is not the Lagos state that we all used to know. Everybody's talking about Rwanda because you got a president who said, I want to think out of the box. I want to do stuff. Can we get there? I think that, and that's the point I'm making, that mm. we have the laws. It is making the laws work that is a problem. That's it. This, this, this program would have achieved nothing if we don't address how we're going to make sure that those laws work. For example, we're talking about the, the Chinese and Galamse and everything. The laws to prevent what is going on exist. How are they working in Ghana without the work permits? Mm -hmm. Do we really need an interministerial committee? Or we need Ghana immigration going in there, putting them in buses, and putting them on the next flight back to Beijing? That is what we should be talking about. No, no, no. But we need, we need, to, we need, to, <laughs> we need, to, we need to iron out and tease out the disconnect. Because well, if you just I'll tell you one disconnect in Accra. Yeah. The boss of the mayor is not popularly elected. No. The boss is nominated mm -hmm. by the president mm -hmm. and then is approved by the assembly. The mayor's loyalty is not to the city. No. It's loyalty to his boss. Okay? Because he's the president's man on, in, oh, in, 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 in the city. He, he, he's so, the little president. Yes. So you can always get, he always has to keep one antenna out for the for the uh, vibrations from the big house. If we are going to do what is to say, then first of all, you've got to change the law so that the mayor is responsible to the people of the city. Mm -hmm. He will have to come back every four years and justify an his ten, uh, stewardship for the city. Mm -hmm. But so long as he doesn't have to come back and do that, he, you know, he will simply keep looking at the castle. So why, why does he bother to even go through it? Why does he? Bother to try to decongest. Because it's part of his mandate. But he understands fully well that, that at some point to be stopped. At certain points, things will happen. And that, that's politics. You have to learn to go around it. It's unfortunate, but that's the way we've set it up. And I suppose the whole point mm. of this discussion here is do we have to go through that? That's right. But we will get to the ACE's point about. You see, let let, let mm. me give you an example of a place like Rwanda. If you go to Rwanda, they've got a very sophisticated, intricate Okada system running, in which absolutely everybody who is involved obeys the laws, wears the helmet, uh, helmets, they have um, security checks on all of them, etc., etc., etc. Come to our situation, and the law is passed, and the first thing a regional minister says is that this is useless, we're going to do, we're going to not enforce it. Can I ask a question? And he remained minister after he uttered those words? Absolutely. That is the problem we have. Absolutely. There, right there, is the problem. If, if, if the you minister who criticized Ajiri Blankson yes. and pulled him back, back yeah. from implementing his this congestion, still remained the minister. And let, let me tell you exactly what the, that minister said. There are many laws sitting in statute books which are not being implemented. And that the law banning Okada riding should be added to them. This was what, this was what <laughs> the particular minister said at the time. And he remained minister. He remained, not only did he remain minister, I believe he's become an, even a bigger minister. Well, but, 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 but right there, like I said, we, we've, ident we've identified what the problem is. Mm. Look, we've all traveled and driven in other countries. Why do you not go beyond the speed limit when you are driving on the I-95 in the U.S.? Because you know... The law will catch you. The, the, the next car might be the policeman. In Ghana, in my years of driving, I have seen two speed guns. One between Mankesim and Cape Coast, and the other one became between Cape Coast and Takrade. And they hide in the corner so they can get out and, hey, we've caught you. They haven't been calibrated for about 30 years. I well, can tell and, you that and, 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 and guess what? <laughs> because they are, they are the only two. Before you get there, the drivers come in, will blink twice to tell you they are, two, they are two towns away. That is how laughable the attempts are. Yeah. But, and, and that is why I, I, I say that early days yet, but I'm beginning, to, I'm, I'm beginning to like this IGP. He's put the police out there. Mm. You know that when you are getting to a traffic light, there will be, apart from red, yellow, and green, there will be red and blue flashing. I think that we begin to see a fair bit of discipline around there. Although sometimes the police just stand there and allow the motorbike riders to ride through the red lights as if red lights do not apply to motorbike riders. But bit by bit, we will get there. I think that, but it's going to cost us money. 
political will, we're going to have to take a decision that we're going to do it. But the politicians are always going to be afraid because of the vote. Look, the last days of the NPP, they started implementing traffic laws, arrested bad drivers, threw them in jail, and released them just, uh, uh, in between the two elections because they were losing the election. But Is it just politicians? Because let me take another. We we'll, we'll spent the last 10 minutes talking about what can we do, but it's not just politicians. For example, our law on children. We have several laws on children. Yeah, We're the first yeah. country to uh, ratify, ratify the, ratify the, the convention, etc. Yes, we have all those things act. about when children, when somebody reaches the age of marriage. And yet, as we speak today, people are being betrothed. Because people the are law being hasn't walked from the pages of the law books into the lives of the people. And that journey involves money, politics, economics, social factors. They've been and there that for 20 are, years or oh, more. Okay, can I point out to more, to more to you? Mm -hmm. I just told children. you something from 1895. Yes, I know. Be beggars. You know, yes. you know it's, it's illegal to beg unless you are under the age of 17 and unless you are, you, it's for a religious purpose. We've had all of these laws sitting there. The question is, the, is moving the law from where it is into the lives of the people. If you sit in Accra and pass a, a beautiful children's act based on, 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 a, on a convention of the rights of the child, you have ratified somewhere else people, in the world. But there are people who are making careers with, you know, institutionalized people who are making careers trying to implement, you know, these what, things. What, NGOs. The Not NGOs, the Children's Commission, etc., etc. With, 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 with what funding? We, we, we have, we've had the beautiful intestate succession law in there for how many years and how many widows are still not being deprived of properties because we have to enforce the law. The politicians will not enforce it. Well, they, they, trust me, you and I, if we didn't have laws, we'll break the law all the time. Really, if you get to the traffic lights at twelve midnight, will you will you stop? Will you, you will drive? To no, do you, I mean right? right? But we need that, the law that, implemented. That's a politician to, to no, no, no. To you stop and I. children. No, 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 Being given away at the age of twelve. The reason you elect executive is to make sure that they execute the law. Mm -hmm. Look, the human being, rid, short of all social constraints, will be a beast. So what are we doing to make sure that the executive execute the law? By, we, by, we, by, are, we, are, we have elected... By, by, by having a program like this we have talking elected, about We it. have elected the yeah. executive. We've put them there. Mm. We've put the executive there. Mr. Mayor, I mean, when, when you were mayor, I think it was maybe, I don't know, the issues of uh, the Kayayo and those... Were just starting. They were just starting. The Kayayo yeah, be yeah. really became a phenomenon in the mid-90s after the disturbances in the north, mm -hmm. Kokumba, Namumba, yeah. whatever. The drift, yeah. That, that mm. drifted, a lot of people came. So it was just starting. And it became a, a, a big, huge thing for the city. It is a huge thing now. At that time, it wasn't that big. But, I mean, in retrospect, it's obvious what was going to happen. It was going to happen. Sure. But then, when, when then people promised politically to build... Well, hostels for and and and, 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 well, and, and, and and they were not voted for, so it yes. might have been a repudiation of sure. the of the promise to build hostels for Kaya. But Kaya. you're raising issues. You're raising issues of of funding. You know, I don't believe it's so much the funding no, as oh, a political I, 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 will. Step, but both it's of them. one of them. It's, 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 let, let, let's the look at. Let's look at. There the, must be a cultural social, social convention. Yeah, a convention that this is what we want to do. But see, time and time again, you get people. You know, it's not just the minister we spoke about. There's a very famous case, and I remember because it's, it's remained with me when we, the, the Trocosi law was passed. Sure. And a very important member of governance said, I will not obey this. Well, he said it, and then what happened? Did he really take steps to disobey it? And if he did, was he arrested and thrown in jail? No, but you are talking about leadership. You're talking about leadership. Well, and if somebody signals that, well, what do you do? Then, then the people who believe... And not only that, like the, like the minister, he went on to higher things. Well, the, 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 then it's, it would appear as if we reward those who d uh, declare non-allegiance to the law of Ghana, although they swear an oath when they become a minister. So it, 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 it tosses the hot coal back into the lap of the president, the politics of it. That, Mr. President, when your minister said he would defy the law, what did you do? In many countries... He won't last one minute after that statement. He will have to resign. He will be forced to resign. In fact, what I hear in some of those countries is that when you are appointed as minister, you sign your resignation letter and give it to the president. The day he wants to fire you, he dates it and releases it. So often, you are resigned before you find out. But not here. The minister is probably more powerful than his boss because of the votes he delivers from 10 constituencies.
No, it is, the, it, it is for what you and I. It is for, it's for the ordinary guy. Civil society? Civil society who want to make a change. Let me tell you something about politicians. You've been one. Look, when you stare long at a politician, he blinks. He will blink first. But we are not prepared to put our heads out there for that kind of work. If we demand that it should be done, they will do it. But often we folded our arms and are benefiting from the illegality. And so we are all to blame, the politician, civil society, the ordinary Ghanaian, all of us who are breaking the law, and all of us who are not complying with the law. We are to blame right from the least to the greatest. And unless there's a, there's a, there's a complete social change of mind, which is what he's talking about, we are not going anywhere. We we'll continue see, to bumble around. We, in our constitution, we have a body called National Council for Civic Education. And, and, and what is their budget? It's a question. You see, we keep talking about budgets. See, we are in a country that in the last year overspent its budget by almost five billion United States dollars. And, and, and has consistently arrested? done so. So I don't think that and, and, the and issue of money, not as a cock about mm -hmm. but I said I don't think the issue is not having the money. The issue I, is a, I, I, I agree with you. It is a it is a willingness in my view. Sure, to deploy those call. resources. The political will that so, we so political will that, 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 that the ex mayor is talking about. You know, but I'm just saying that even if the NCC, the NCC is a, is a constitutional body. A constitutional body. You cannot uh, write it off. But the point I'm trying to make is that the issues you're talking about, civil society, and I would have thought, and, and you know, we had a similar discussion last week, I would have thought that these are the things that the civic education. Do we still teach civics in our schools? No, we don't. You and I yeah. we about civics and current affairs. But so if we why don't do we have a civic education constitutional body and we don't teach civics? What is it doing? The only well, thing I see it doing is election time. You come and say this is how you vote. But those people, whether, yeah. whether they have money, they are being paid a salary every day. And have done so since 1992. Can we ask them what they're doing? It's, it's, I, I won't discount that. It's, I believe it's part of the things that we have to do. We have to look at the NCC and its role. But it goes way beyond that. We, get, we have to identify all the various strat, uh, levels and who is supposed to do what to make sure that this nation works. Right now, it's not working. And, Mr. And that's Miller, what we are talking. Yes, sir. what was your relationship with your boss? Which of Your them? political boss. You, you, you were, you were, yes. by, the, by the Constitution, you are the... Uh, handmaiden uh, of the, the handmaiden of the political boss. Well, I mean, but, but, and then kind of under local government, not really under local government evolution. <laughs> no, because the, no, the the MMs, whatever they call them, are the president's representatives mm. at on the ground. That's direct. Technically, but then obviously you have the local uh, minister local of local, local government. You have the uh, regional as I said, boss. So there are tiers between. So what were the, the relationships be between the various? The minister, the bosses. Oh, the to president extent, or the chief you, of yeah. uh, CEO of yeah, the yeah, nation. Yeah. So yeah. you have a certain... Do you run into difficulties? Sometimes you report to him. Mm. Sometimes, very rarely, because there is an hierarchy that must be maintained. If I have anything, I go through a regional minister, mm. and then it goes to the minister of local government, and then it goes to him. Unless he has reason to circumvent them uh, and talk to me. Let directly. me rephrase the question like right. uh, some lawyers are doing. Yeah. What led you to the statement you made? At that time? Yeah, that time. Uh, it's on the face oh, of it the was, pink sheet. It, it, yes. it didn't take um, brain surgery <laughs> to make that comment. No, but... I mean, it's quite obvious that when you are running a city and you are trying to do the congestion and you are being... <sighs> restricted it's quite obvious why so when you get a smart journalist to come and talk to you and you want to be honest with the journalist you tell them well look the reason why these things have not been done is because the our political bosses lack the political will to go through to the end that's all so why don't our political bosses say that let's change the law because we need the votes. Well, you can ask them that. Well, I, I don't no understand. politician would well, what answer I'm that is, in the affirmative. What I'm saying is that, uh, especially when it comes to things like decongestion and the Children's Act and all of that, the implementation look, always gets blocked. Let's take that. There's too much. Let, let, look, let, yes. let, let, let me tell you what my, yeah. my view is. Yeah. Ghana's president is a super president. He's a super president. Yes. The president it's a, it's has an elected dictatorship. Way, way too much power. Well, I there's think a reason that, for that. Yes, <laughs> I, I, yes, we, we, it's, it's a reflection of mm, things, mm, that were, mm. things that were. 
I think that if, if the mayor is to have power, we need to set our constitutional structure in such a way that there are certain matters in which the mayor is his own boss. But you see, let me, let me, let me tell you, because you, you alluded to me being a politician once. Let me tell you what happened. Tell me. The reality is that when one dispensation is in power, the other dispensation says we must elect mayors. Sure, but When it true. swaps around, it's, ah, no, 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 because the power to appoint and give instructions directly. Mm. It's, it's an immense power. Uh, absolutely. And, and those who said, oh, we should, we should up, uh, elect mayors when they were in the position, mm. suddenly find reason why this shouldn't happen. It happens all the time. All the time. Mm. It's happening yeah, so, all the time. And, 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 it's, and so that explains why we are in the mess. And the okay. people who ought to speak are the ordinary Joes and, and Josephines who ought to say, we are, we are tired of Coffee this. Kofi and Nama. Mm -hmm. Well, the, so, some names have been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and I've become part of our names. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have some. Tanya. Nah, you, a, you have some. Charles. Eves. Eves. Ah, even better. Even I, better. Have, I have West. Eves. Eves. So which, are, which are about the president. Right? <laughs> you see, yeah, you're, you're right. We, we, we need to begin to speak about this and begin to hold the president personally responsible for the president to say, well, this is a bit too much for me. I want to cede some of these powers so I can exercise, I, 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 can, I, can, I, I can have more space to do other things that we have to do. We need to start looking at the powers of the presidency. They are way too immense. We need to let the mayors have some power. I'm not too sure whether voting in itself is, 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 the, is the be all and end all of it, but the powers that the mayors have ought to be greatly enhanced if they are going to be real agents of change in the districts, the municipalities, and the metropolitan areas. You see, my, you see I, I, I'll share your view, but one of the problems I have is that we've been through an extensive and expensive constitutional review process. And for my money, all that came out were banalities. <laughs> the issues that we are, we are trying to discuss here in terms of mm. the restructuring of the powers of the rulers and the ruled, I did not see any of it in any of these discussions. It's, it's not going to happen without a fight. I'm not talking of war. I'm talking no, about no, it, I'm, it, it has to be a long, protracted debate to force these things to happen. Change, it, evolution works, but change comes when we are prepared to fight for it. So it, it, it looks like a plague on both your houses. It doesn't matter the label they wear. The politicians like to hold on to the power. Of that is true. They do. But in, if they want to hold on to the power, how do you square holding on to the power with the pretense that you want an ordered society? Uh, to, because to, we all like to go to heaven when we die. But we don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to make it as palatable as possible. Okay? Well, so, so, so the bottom line... But, mm -hmm. as Ace has said, the reason that the three of us are sitting here is to send a message. Mm. After all, when you started this program, you started a program with the president yes. talking yes. about setting up this committee, yeah. yes. talking about it, okay? So, you are asking, we are asking him, but you are asking him that, do we need another committee? Are there other things which are fundamentally more important to be examined? All right? So. But one of the things we haven't talked about, you see, we always bring these things back because it's, it's also the character of the society. You know, every Ghanaian wants to find a way of sidestepping the law if they can't to get their way. I'm not yeah. sure about every Ghanaian. I, I uh, think and, that... I, in, I, I, in, in, in almost every situation, I, I, you, you I, find I, that I, this I, is I, happening. No, but really, the, the, as I keep saying, if you get to the traffic light at 12 midnight mm. and there's nobody there, no other car park, you will drive through. Why is that in some countries they have something they call the four-way stop? Yes. Where if you get to the four-way, whether you, 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 you will stop. Enforcement. And the first person to get to the line is the first person to leave. Because there's enforcement. Have that is the bottom line. Have you seen line. Junction? If forget the, it. When the, the lights will go off, <laughs> then you see who we really are. Yes, but what I'm trying to no, make. No, and, and, and get Aren't this. we reflect, Sometimes isn't the politician reflecting no, no, the wait, people that I, we I'm are? I'm saying that the best image of it is that sometimes when the traffic light is mm, off, mm. then a person we consider normally as deranged or a lunatic will be directing the traffic, and you and I will be told going to move. Aren't you agree with my absolute point that we get the leadership we, what we get because of the people that we are? I agree. Yes. 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 Yes, and and we, we, are, we are added them. <laughs> Let's end the show. <laughs> Absolutely. So here we are. The <laughs> <laughs> have, have we resolved anything today? No, we haven't resolved anything. But the objects of the programs I'm doing 
It's, to it's essentially to take issues and highlight why there are bottlenecks and why we need to make sure that we begin to find ways to think outside of the box. Mm. You know, we, we have these platitudes where things come, speeches are made, and then nothing happens. But I think that, as you say, if we want to start to get things moving, then, shows then the, the, the issues are, do you just make the law? What are the underlying factors? What are the issues? What, are they, what, what is the political underplay? What are the realities? But unless we begin to dissect these kind of underlying influences, then we're going to just sit there and politicians who say, oh, we'll do A, B, and C. You know, because I will still end the show by saying, is there any illegality going on in the context of the small-scale mining? If somebody is giving a concession and he invites a Chinese person in, and a Chinese person brings their machine and it gets all that stuff done straight. and the Ghanaian is getting their money, straight. is that illegal? Straight out illegality. Straight out illegality. If What's the illegality? If they've not gone through the process of the Chinese person to stay in Ghana and, jo and work being approved by the Minerals Commission and Immigration mm -hmm. Service, it is an illegality. Good. If they've gone through that, it is not an illegality. Yeah. So we establish the, the illegal and the legal But even parts. if they've gone through that, we get, then we can ask questions of the Minerals Commission and, and Immigration Service. Why did you give those permits? Is it in the interest of Ghanaians that you give those permits? So there's the illegality bit, and then there's the, still the political bit. You see, because one of the things that I, I want to end on is the fact that we have assumed that every Chinese here is illegal. But I don't think that is true. I agree. Thank you very much, my senior brother, former mayor, Ace. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us on Tarzan's Take tonight. <laughs> thank you for It's that. been um, interesting. And I think that my very provocative opening words have maybe been um, reinforced and in many ways maybe um, supported by, by my two guests. What we need to do as a society is to actually begin to hold our leaders to account. And if we start holding our leaders to account, the laws that are passed should also reflect the realities of the culture in which we operate. And when we pass them, we must ensure that these laws are enforced. You've been watching Tarzan's Take. If you enjoyed it, thank you very much. We'll be back next week.